Before we begin solving part A, we first need to find the final wavelength by using the Compton scattering formula. Next, we're going to plug in what this scattering angle theta is right here. And we were told that after the collision, the electron moves forward and the photon recoils backwards. So that description alone tells us that the scattering angle will be 180 degrees. And once again, we're trying to solve for the final wavelength. So if we go ahead and reduce this expression right here, the cosine of 180 is negative 1. So 1 minus negative 1 is 2. So this is where we get the 2 right here. And we multiply that by Planck's constant. And we divide that by the mass of the electron. And we multiply that by the speed of light. And we're going to add the initial wavelength. Next, we'll go ahead and substitute in the values for these variables. And we'll get a wavelength of 1.15 times 10 to the minus 10th meters. Now, because in this scenario, momentum is conserved, we can go ahead and state that the initial momentum is going to equal the final momentum. But what does the initial momentum consist of? It only consists of the photon that's moving. So only the photon will be present here in the initial momentum. Now, the next question we have to ask, what is the momentum for a photon? So recall this formula right here. This states that the energy is equal to the square root of the momentum squared times the speed of light squared plus the initial mass squared times the speed of light raised to the fourth power. This allows us to find the momentum of a massless particle. And what is a massless particle? Well, the photon is a massless particle. So because it has no mass, we can cancel out this term right here so that it gets reduced down to this form right here. Now, if we want to find the momentum, we simply divide the speed of light on both sides. We also note that the energy of a photon is simply Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. And we'll notice here that the speed of light cancels out on both sides. And we get that the momentum for a photon is simply Planck's constant divided by the wavelength. Now let's go ahead and expand the rest right here. So we've already argued what will be on the initial momentum side, but what about the final momentum? Well, if you think about it, once the photon collides with the stationary electron, it's going to eject that electron. So the final momentum is going to consist of the electron as well as the photon. The reason why this is negative is because they're going in opposite directions. And remember, momentum is a vector, so it has a direction and magnitude. We'll go ahead and rearrange this equation we have here so that we isolate the momentum of the electron. So we simply add these two terms together. Next, we'll go ahead and plug in the values for these variables right here. We now know what the initial wavelength is, and we do know what the final wavelength is. So this will give us that the momentum of the electron is 1.18 times 10 to the negative 23rd kilogram meters per second. Now, in order to solve part B, it's asking for the kinetic energy of the electron. Well, here we can state that the kinetic energy is equal to the initial energy minus the final energy. And we know that the energy, we can write that as Planck's constant times the speed of light divided by the wavelength. So we now have the values that we can plug in for these variables. And once we do that, we'll get 7.6295 times 10 to the negative 17th joules. Now that is not the answer. We're almost there. We need to convert this into electron volts. And we accomplish that by using this conversion factor right here. So for every one electron volt, we have 1.6 times 10 to the negative 19th joules. This will give us a value of 478 electron volts. Now, just a quick note right here. If you're getting an answer of 491 electron volts, because I've punched this into the calculator and I've, I've gotten that number as well, or if you're getting some other number that isn't, 478 electron volts. It is simply due to the significant digits that were used in the calculator. Because we rounded throughout our calculations, the solution will vary slightly from the true answer.